Well, just to let you guys know that as soon as I finished the video that you're watching now, as soon as I finished it, a new update popped up. So I am inserting this in the beginning of it. Uh, so in the later on in this video, you'll see that I said he's set to make a speech today. But as soon as I finished this video, literally the update came up about he finished his speech and the Hezbollah's leader is blaming the IDF for the massacre of the Israelis. Um, he's saying that it was 100 percent Palestine that did this attack. And he also goes down here to say that Lebanon joined on October 8th and he thanks the groups of Yemen and Iraq that are known as the Axis of Resistance, which includes Shiite Muslim Iraqi militia that have been firing at the U.S. forces in Syria and Iraq and the Yemen um, militia that has uh, joined by firing drones at Israel. So he said that it is an unveiled threat to Israel. He claimed that a preemptive strike on Israel would be a stupid mistake. In our front, all operations are open. Well, hello, hello, hello. Much love to you all. May God bless you all. Hit that like button. Share this out. And uh, much love to every single one of you. Um, tomorrow, uh, sometime during the morning tomorrow, I'm going to release a five-minute study called The Living Water. Um, join in on it. Listen to it. It's only five minutes. Um, so please join in. I have some updates for today. Uh, some of it also goes with what we talked about in yesterday's live about the Battle of Armageddon. Uh, today, Israeli officials uh, are talking uh, the government's West Bank policies, and they are warning. Uh, they're worried that this is harming the support from the U.S. Um, I've been maybe one of those very few that I feel at some point in time our country is going to break the Abraham Accords deal, and we know as many nations are turning their back from NATO, no support. Uh, if you want to stay part of NATO, you have to listen to what NATO says. So the policies of the Prime Minister Benjamin Coalition and the West Bank have infuriated U.S. President Joe Biden administration in recent days, distracting Washington from providing more full-throttled support to Israel amid the war with Hamas. Two Israeli officials tell the Times of Israel, speaking on the condition of the animosity um, that's going on, they have uh, criticized the government. One of the officials point the long-standing issue of settler violence, which the government has rarely condemned and hasn't spoken out against since the outbreak of the war with Hamas, even as the phenomenon has had deadly ramifications and risk opening up an additional front in the West Bank. This isn't just something being raised by the State Department. It's gotten all the way up to the president who has talked about it publicly and privately in the middle of a war. The Israeli official laments, appearing to point his frustration at Jerusalem and not at Washington. So, I know I've seen many things that already there's people within the United States, NATO, everybody that's pushing who could eventually take over um, running the um, country of Israel after Benjamin is gone. So, this is big news. Um, we know that we've seen... Uh, Joe Biden go back and forth saying, I support. And then yesterday saying that, you know, was asking for a ceasefire now after first saying he didn't want a ceasefire. Now it seems like they're infuriated about some of the things that are happening. Also, this is what we talked about in yesterday's live. Hezbollah's leader is set to make a very big anticipated speech. I really think that they're going to put their hand into this war uh, officially, which will make uh, Hezbollah and it will make, um, you know, um, Yemen and Hamas and who else is going to join here real soon. We know that Wagner group has been giving missiles. So we know that Wagner group, part of Russia is starting to support a lot of this too. We talked about yesterday how North Korea is also planning on giving aid to Hamas. Um, you know, Hamas is not as big as Hezbollah. Hezbollah enters, they have a lot more resources. So I really think, uh, with as much trouble as it seems that Israel, almost 30 days in, it doesn't seem like they've gotten very far with eradicating um, Hamas. You add another uh, person into this, Hezbollah, another power that has a lot more missiles and capability. Uh, we could be seeing um, this really ramp up 
and uh, we know that the Bible says that Jerusalem will be surrounded. You got the north and the south. Before too long, the east and the west most likely will be getting into it, and they'll be completely surrounded by this point. But they are backed by Iran, like it says, and Hezbollah has been engaging Israeli forces along the border where 50 of its fighters have been killed in the deadliest escalation since they fought a war in 2006. This is one of the worst wars that they've had. I mean, we go all the way back, way back to the um, wars back then. We are seeing one of the biggest wars going. Wearing an all-black turban or a descendant of Prophet Muhammad, the Shiite um, robes, is one of the most predominant figures in the Arab, uh, the Arab world. This is one of the biggest predominant figures. When he speaks, as I showed the video yesterday, how they were lining up all the chairs, it really, um, a lot of people come and listen to him. He has a lot of support. Not everyone supports him, but he has a lot of support as uh, the leader of Hezbollah. And um, also we see the Israeli forces blast the subterranean Hamas uh, terror tunnels and major Gaza operation last night. Uh, this underground passage network that's used by Hamas militants, the IDF posted a video on its social media on Friday claiming to show the bombing of terror tunnels in Gaza. So they've been taking out some of these tunnels as of last night. And many officials in Israel believe that the majority of the 240 hostages held captive by Hamas since October 7th assault are hidden somewhere in this underground network. Very possible. I also really agree with this here, too. I do think that this is another sign of the end times that we live in, global expansion of hate. Um, I, I, I think this is long overdue. I, I'm not going to dog them, though, for saying uh, that it's long overdue. But I think that uh, the global hate has been expanding since 2020. Uh, there's been all these things that the government are throwing in our face that has had so many protests. I Just in my life alone, I'm not saying that uh, there hasn't been a lot of protests, but I really feel that from 2020 till now, we have seen a very huge scale of protest worldwide. And like we talked about last night, if you missed that video, it is... Um, talk about London is calling for uh, a draft because they're expecting a million man plus march in the streets November 11th uh, to be pro Hamas pro Palestine so I do believe that like we are seeing in the book of uh, Matthew 24 that we are seeing hearts wax cold and people shall hate one another and it's exactly what we are seeing with all the things that are going on if you want to go, I, I can't share links because over a month and a half ago, I was threatened by YouTube that I cannot share the links in my description bar anymore. That's why my videos do not have links. Uh, whatever they can do to try to stop this channel, they continue to try to do. But God is bigger and we thank him uh, for always going before us in the battle. But this is on Prophecy News Watch. It is the newest uh, one that they have on their website and it definitely is showing of course, I don't think, like I said, we really need to read it. I just think these things popping up in the headlines is just another sign that we're starting to see some of these biblical news outlets starting to see the official times that we are in now. There's also a huge storm that is hitting Western Europe with record-breaking winds causing deaths and widespread damage. I'm not going to read most of it, but I am going to show some of the videos.
Morning. Morning. You should have brought your kayak. <laughs> I hope nobody's in that truck. Man, the lights are on. Like, if so, it's time to really get out of that truck, man. It's being tossed to and fro. Um, here's some more. <laughs> Personally, I would be, if I was in my car, getting out and trying to climb on top of all those cars, jumping across the roofs of them to try to get out. Oh, man. Total uproot. That's a lot of big trees, too. You know, it takes years to get these trees in this. These are old trees. I'd say it's really caused some damage, definitely. Man, it tore that roof up. Those are hard roofs to put together, too. That's a lot of damage. They are not lying. That is a lot of damage. It's all right. One last thing: an ancient super volcano in Italy has been rumbling to life, putting half a million residents on the edge. We got another huge volcano. I mean, we're talking an ancient super volcano is uh, starting to come to life after a 3.6 magnitude tremor uh, had happened. We're used to it, but it doesn't mean we aren't afraid, is what they said. This is at west of Naples, and uh, it has had more than 2,500 earthquake tremors in the past three months. So far, few have been large, but residents are on edge. Uh, they live on top of a super volcano. As you can tell in the picture, there is a lot of town around the area that um, definitely, and this is a classification given to about 20 of the world's largest volcanoes. The constant earthquakes are a sign of volcanic activity deep underground that is happening. And um, which right here, this is the volcano, the most famous one that destroyed in the first century AD, Pompeii. Uh, this is, uh, they've made movies and everything about it. So this is definitely a very, this huge crater here is from, it happened from when that huge um, eruption happened. Um, so I don't know, could we be seeing this slumbering giant, as it's saying, come to life really soon? Time will tell. But all I know is that we are definitely having signs of the times to definitely seek the Lord more and more and more. And, um, brothers and sisters, like I said, tomorrow I will be releasing a pre recorded video. It's five minutes long about the living water. Please come in. And I hope that it encourages you to read the Bible. Hope it encourages you to pray more. I hope it encourages you to seek the Lord more. And also, Sunday at 12 30 p.m. Eastern, I will be preaching a word called an urgent plead. If I had only known, um, I did a sermon a while back if I had only known, but I used the same title again, but I put urgent plead because I think the times are urgently pleading for us to take things even more serious because since this war has started, we are seeing definitely a change in the environment. I gave a word earlier at the beginning of this year that said a giant shift is coming. I preached a word at the beginning of this year, said a giant shift is coming this year. And it is a giant shift has came. And I really think it's based off what we're seeing with this war. And I really think this guy 
getting ready to do a speech today um, could be very predominant with more wars getting ready to possibly take place. So do not forget to hit the like button and much love and may God bless you. If you like videos like this, hit the like button and subscribe. Much love to you all and may God bless you.